1998, Banjo Kazooie was released for the Nintendo 64, having gone through many changes during its production. With the success of their advanced computer modeling technique used in the stunning 3D visuals for Donkey Kong Country, Rareware had quickly gained Nintendo's respect as a second party developer. Work began on the Lost Project Dream game that followed the adventures of Peter uh, Edison and his troubles with Captain Black Eye. However, the game became too massive for the Super Nintendo and was quickly moved to the N64 with many role and plot variations. The end result was an action-adventure platformer inspired by Super Mario 64. Banjo Kazooie became one of Rare's most beloved franchises for Nintendo up until Microsoft blew it amongst beautifully themed worlds and puzzles, an incredible soundtrack, humorous dialogue, and fun exploration with tons of collectibles. BK was a game to be reckoned with. Rare was at their high, but had also opened up one of video games' greatest mysteries in the process. Join me as we take an in-depth look at the Banjo Kazooie Let's Play bonus of Stop and Swap. At the end of Banjo Kazooie, if a player has collected all 100 jiggies in the game, they're prompted with a special bonus ending from Mumbo Jumbo, who shows three pictures of missed objects that can be collected and used for the sequel, Banjo Tooie. Of the two secret eggs and ice keys shown, only one is actually visible in the game. The ice key can be seen in Freeze Easy Peak behind an ice wall with no means of getting to it, and the two eggs are hidden in specific areas that are also not accessible. However, curiosity of the late 90s sparked the inner hacker of dedicated players to make use of Game Shark codes to enable the moon jump code and jump right over the ice wall, obtaining the ice key. Interestingly enough, it was discovered that once collecting any of the secret items, an additional screen was found in the pause menu, labeled Stop and Swap, containing any special items collected. Of course, this led to more hacking until it was discovered that there were six eggs and one ice key found in the game, only obtainable via Game Shark codes. Now we fast forward two years later to the release of Banjo Tooie in 2000, where said items missed should be discovered and questions should be answered once and for all. What we got in Banjo Tooie were these these BK game packs. Breaking them would reveal one of the secret items mystery eggs less than half the size of their BK counterparts, along with an ice key. It was safe to say that Banjo Tooie contained the idea of Stop and Swap, but was clearly not implemented as originally planned. So in order to discuss any theories, it's important to bring you the facts as far as we know. The idea for Stop and Swap came about from the use of hot swapping, which basically is the swapping out of any parts of a system while the system is still running. It was said that while Banjo Kazooie was running, after having obtained all the special items, a player would remove the game without turning off the power, and then pop in Banjo Tooie. N64s at the time had about 10 to 30 seconds of RAM that would be able to read code from the previous game one was playing, and therefore transfer data, egg data to be specific, to the game currently being played. In other words, BK code would be transferred to BT and access a different BT code. So let's say that the pink egg from Banjo Tooie was given the code A117. That object slash code would swap A117 to Banjo Tooie, which the sequel would have already been pre-coded with a set option to trigger a different code, that code corresponding to the reward from the egg, once it reads in that pink egg, A117. Uh, I know that that's pretty confusing, but you, you get the point. Now before the comments come in, No, the console didn't have to be turned on! While you're swapping, blow me and your Banjo Tooie cartridge. I'll get to that, let me explain. A PlayStation at the time was able to eject a disc without the console crashing. You could swap out a game with no issues while the system was on. However, if you did it with a Nintendo 64 cartridge while it was on, terrible things would happen. Hell, even if you accidentally kicked the machine, the whole screen goes staticky. There's even a patent out there that was discovered from Rare that would allow the Nintendo 64 to transfer data via swapping while the console was off. But the whole process was doomed after hardware changes to the Nintendo 64 made that 10 second RAM availability to just 1 second to swap out cartridges, making it pretty much impossible and highly prone to damage either way. It was a great idea from Rare, but the technology from Nintendo was just not up to par at the time. Or was it? Now this is usually the point where most stop and swap videos, uh, stop. There's much more to this. For those of you who don't know, Nintendo had developed an attachment to the Nintendo 64 to compete with other consoles known as the 64 Double D. Not your mother's cup size, but the 64 disk drive. The disk drive had an increased amount of storage with the addition of extra RAM from the expansion pack that would have accompanied it. The same expansion pack that came with Donkey Kong 64. Hmm. So yes, DK64 started off on the 64 disk drive, a machine that sold a limited amount of units and was only released in Japan. Now what does Donkey Kong 64 have to do with Stop and Swap? Well, as many of you probably know, DK and BK had beta features that sort of connected them. There's the beta picture of Donkey Kong in Banjo's house, and the locker slash fridge slash I don't know what the hell that is with Banjo-Kazooie's face slapped on the side of it. 
There's also dialogue that was not taken out of the game, I presume by accident, in Banjo-Kazooie that includes Bottles Bonus Challenge when you first begin the game in Banjo's house, where Kazooie calls Bottles Barrel Boy, suggesting that Donkey Kong was the original portrait and narrator of the Puzzle Bonus Challenge here. But let's get to the mystery. The Rare Witch product had found through codes in the game years after its 1999 release that Donkey Kong 64 contained textual evidence for the Ice Key. Wow, what a coincidence! Actually, no, it kind of makes sense. See, Banjo-Kazooie and DK64 were in development around the same time, although DK64 was delayed with the transfer from disk drive to regular cartridge. The origins of Stop and Swap, or just a type of hot swapping in general, may have been demoed between these two games in early production. It certainly would have been a lot easier to transfer data using the floppy disk like cartridges to the game packs while both were already plugged into the same system and running at the same exact time. Could the Ice Key have been used specifically for Donkey Kong, and then the six eggs used for Banjo-Tooie? I think it's quite possible. However, I think that the DK Stop and Swap transfer was cancelled well into its production with the confusion and doubtfulness of success the 64 disk drive may or may not have, which we now know to have failed. Even so, it wouldn't have been difficult to program a corresponding feature slash code to Banjo-Tooie complementing the ice key if it were dropped from Donkey Kong. So that's my opinion on debunking the whole DK Stop and Swap feature that many believe still exists. Moving on. Now many will argue that there is no mystery to stop and swap. The pink and blue eggs and ice key from Mumbo's photos make their way into Banjo-Tooie along with the yellow egg. Bring the eggs to Heggy's egg shed in Tooie and she'll hatch them to reveal additional features in the game such as homing eggs to lock onto targets, probably inspired by Goldeneye, the Briegel Bash where Banjo Randy Orton's Kazooie into the ground, and Jinjo in multiplayer. The ice key is used to unlock a safe found further into the game and eventually lead you to a Dragon Kazooie transformation. So what's the mystery? Most say that these were at least part of the original Stop and Swap rewards that you would have gotten from Banjo-Kazooie, but there were still three other eggs with missing features. It was theorized by fellow YouTuber J.O. Thumbs Up Master that there were six features in BT not needed to complete the game, as well as six secret eggs. So the Ice Key might have unlocked something else. The first four features are already used as Stop and Swap items. Dragon Kazooie, Homing Eggs, Briegel Bash, and Jinjo in Multiplayer. Thumbs Up Master's theory also included Royston's extra air bubbles for underwater, normally given by saving Banjo's goldfish in Spiral Mountain, and Devil Bottles, which was a feature that was not 100% complete for the release of Banjo-Tooie, but can be accessed with a Game Shark and run pretty smooth. Devil Bottles would be controlled by Player 2, who can now possess enemies and beat the hell out of Player 1. I personally stood by this theory for years. Uh, I, I believe it was even backed by a Rare employee who said it was the closest theory. Keep this in mind for later as we consider Dragon Kazooie coming from a mystery egg instead of the ice key axis, which by this theory must be used for some other purpose. But we'll get into my own theory later. So naturally, players were disappointed to say the least by the clearly unanswered questions of Stop and Swap. It wasn't until 2001 that the Rare Witch Projects, Ice Mario, and Subdrag hacked the original Banjo-Kazooie game to reveal in-game codes, not Game Shark code, but codes that could be typed into the sandcastle floor that would finally reveal every location of Stop and Swap eggs in the game, as well as break the ice wall in front of the ice key, raise Shark Food Island where the pink egg was shown, and break the door where the blue egg was shown. For the first time in three years, every owner of Banjo-Kazooie would be able to obtain all the Stop and Swap eggs and ice key with the use of really long rhyme schemes. And as part of my Banjo-Kazooie Let's Play, if you haven't watched it, go check that out. I will be typing in these special codes into the sandcastle and collecting those now.
Alright everyone, here we are, coming at you almost live. Gonna just change up the pace a little bit and get away from the script for a while, just as part of my Let's Play. Uh, you don't have to watch this part, I know a lot of people who play this game know where all the eggs are, they know how to unlock all the sandcastle cheat codes, and this is just a waste of time for you, so skip! I'm gonna put a little analog thingy in the, 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 I don't know, on the screen somewhere, so you can skip it and, and keep watching the video. This is for people, the dedicated fans of my, my 14 subscribers who have watched my Let's Play. Thank you very much, thank you, thank you, thank you. So this is uh, just just collecting the stuff, and we'll get right back into the theory and everything. This is a very long video. I apologize for that. I had to, I, you know, I, I watch a lot of stop and swap videos like on YouTube and everything, and none of them really covered like everything. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you, they say the complete history of stop and swap, but I don't think so. You really got to go in depth when you do this kind of stuff. Um. Also, I'm, I'm very impressed that I didn't fall. This took one shot. This is the first time I ever took one shot to climb all the way to the top without falling. And some of you may be asking, how did you get the pink egg there? Because I saw your Let's Play and you already collected the pink egg. And once you delete save files in Banjo Kazooie, you can't recollect the eggs again and everything. It's a game shark code. I had to get the first one back. See, that mumbo is not supposed to be there. That dialogue is non-existent. Or it goes somewhere. I don't remember where it went. So yeah, I, I thought I solved the mystery of stop and swap when I found that one. So we're just gonna skip right to Gobi's Valley. Uh, and we're gonna skip all the way over here, apparently, too. Good editing job, great. Just trying to save the viewers some pleasuring time. This is pretty cool. It's interesting, though, that only, like, three of the... Three or four of the stop and swap items actually have specific rooms. Like, this room is completely dedicated to Stop and Swap. You couldn't even break into it. I mean, without, like, a, a Game Shark code or whatever. So I thought that was interesting. And then, like, the other three are just kind of chilling in levels. Like, in random spots. Very interesting, though. I love that blue color. That's like a... It's the Egyptian blue. You know, like, like King Tut's buried in it. Like, his tomb. It's got the gold and then, like, the blue sapphire. That's not... That's not color. What, what the hell is sapphire? Oh, uh, never mind. What am I talking about? I don't know many Egyptian knowledge, that's the problem. Ah! Oh! I actually got blasted like five times walking into this level just by the snowman. I hate those guys! Hate them! Eek! The bear again! Oh. I love that fanfare. That is like, it's such a rewarding fanfare. It's so rewarding to know that you just collected a useless item that you're never gonna be able to use anyway. Oh, stop and swap, how you, how you misinterpret, you misunderestimate. Oh god, what am I talking about? Man Monster Mansion. So this level has two stop and swap eggs, as you probably know. Took me like several tries to find the correct window here to break. Help! The little ginger. Dun, dun, dun. See, this one's just like chilling on top of the toilet. Like that, that's a nice present. I wonder what's in there. Here you go. Here you go, Banjo. Left you a little surprise in the toilet. <laughs> uh, even the like the the mucky water is in there too in the toilet. It's just nice detail. You gotta pay attention to detail in certain games, you know. You never know, because it, it, it's very inter in entertaining and interesting. And then we just break into this guy's cellar instead of, like, lifting up the latch and just putting it up. Now Grunty has to purchase a new, like, cellar door. Oh! See, now, th this one's interesting. It's not... I mean, it's not like a separate room where it's a load state, but this one has its own room for the egg. This is, a, this is a mysterious stop and swap egg. You'll see later if you keep watching my theory video about the, the cyan egg. Very interesting. It's, it's, it's interesting to think about, I guess. If, if you watch the rest of the video and find out. You can skip this too, don't forget. In case you're getting bored right now. Because I know my voice, I don't have the golden voice of radio. The golden voice. Bah, bah, bah. Oh, that fanfare is going to follow me to the grave. Hi! Ah, oh. yeah, thank you. A little honeycomb action. Captain's cabin. I feel like they could have put a lot more stuff in this room. I don't know. I guess they really like the detail, but whatever. 
So right, we got one more egg left, I believe, in uh, Click Clock Wood. There you go. The yellow egg. Uh, oh my god. I hope everyone's enjoying the Stop and Swap video. This is the most effort I've probably like, put post-production-wise into a video. So, I I'm very excited about that. I hope the theory goes, Hey, oh, what you doing in there, nap nap? Oh, okay, there's the, uh, the egg over there. Ooh, one night stands, not the best choice. Mmm, acorns. I wonder why Rare even put her in there. Anyway, we're gonna do a victory. Victory screech! And let's get back to the script. The only true evidence of anything related to the real stop and swap can only be found in Banjo Kazooie, the first game. People ask, Well, why did Rare keep the secret ending in Kazooie? Why didn't they just drop it? They didn't drop it because as far as Rare knew in 1998, Stop and Swap was a go and intended for full implementation after the game's release. Stop and Swap wasn't doomed until well into the development of Banjo-Tooie, considering Tooie literally started a month after the release of Banjo-Kazooie. So one might say, okay, well then let's keep searching and hacking into Banjo-Tooie. Well, that wouldn't make sense either because the new Stop and Swap feature, you know, the whole game pack with googly eye situation, is in the final version of BT, which is not the original Stop and Swap. In that case, Rare wouldn't have kept any extra codes regarding the original Stop and Swap, Swapping Room, or Sandcastle codes knowing they wouldn't be able to be used. Rare tried their best to make a post-production fix, hoping no one would notice the Stop and Swap switcheroo and Tui. It's sort of like implementing the new Dumbledore actor in Harry Potter after the original died, just like our Stop and Swap dreams. You have to work with what you got and hope no one notices too much. But still, Banjo Tui is the game to look at for more suggestions for theories, but no actual Stop and Swap implementation. I would bet my life on it that no one will ever one day play Banjo Tooie and be like, Ooh, look what I found, stumbled upon a secret room. It's gone. It doesn't exist. But it certainly did at some point. In Spiral Mountain of Banjo Tooie, if you walk into Grunty's old lair, you walk in and it's titled Gruntilda's Lair, subtitled Entrance. Seems suspicious to have Entrance subtitled since it's the only room in the lair and all the boulders seem to be blocking off the other entrances, none of which any hacker has found any secret rooms behind anyway, just to let you know. But there's textual evidence in the game's programming that contains the subtitled Tower Room. This is as close as we'll get. There is no doubt in my mind that a player was once able to explore parts of Gruntilda's Lair. Maybe not the levels themselves from Banjo-Kazooie, but definitely parts of the tower. Of course, they took the feature out well into development, so it's non-existent. But the tower room is said to be the transformation room from Banjo-Kazooie, you know, where, where Grunty becomes like really hot and those two machine things after she sucks Tootie out at the game over screen, yeah. Personally, I think the tower room was that whole floor after Grunty's furnace fun, including the giant Grunty portrait and warp cauldron. We'll keep that information for later. Now let's take a trip to Jolly Roger's Lagoon in Banjo-Tooie to meet up with a ranting pirate in the back room of Jolly's. Huh, boy does he look familiar. Where have I seen him before? Oh that's right, Captain Black Eye, the original antagonist from Product Dream whose glory, well stardom, was stolen by a bear that looks just like Banjo. Captain Black Eye holds the most popular stop and swap theory. It's believed that his room is where the swapping would take place. I mean just look at the reminiscent pictures on the walls from Treasure Trove Cove. Our pink egg and risen shark food island. This room has stop and swap written all over it. Even these chests look familiar. Now where have I seen these before? Alright, in Black Eye's room at Mad Monster Mansion from Banjo-Kazooie, a level that ironically holds two stop and swap eggs. It was believed that players would use the ice key to open up this chest and throw the eggs in to have the rewards opened in the chests back at Jolly, sort of like a teleporter. Another reason people believe Black Eye is the stop and swap guy is based on the Rusty Bucket ship. It would make sense that Black Eye would be the captain of the ship, and there was a secret in the captain's cabin, but look at this map found on the ship. X marks the spot. This map is Treasure Trove Cove. It corresponds exactly with it. That X is the same spot as Shaw Food Island where the pink mystery egg is located. Just, just look at the circle where I circled there. I know it's not very clear. But the map is clearly a reference to Stop and Swap, but I don't think it means that Black Eye was after the items. So let's get to my theory, finally. Captain Black Eye was more than just a cute cameo reminiscent of Project Dream. It is not a coincidence that he was located in the back room of Jolly, surrounded by Stop and Swap pictures. Jolly Rogers Lagoon and Treasure Trove Cove are identically themed levels. I believe Captain Black Eye was the one who would have given Banjo and Kazooie the Sandcastle cheat codes to obtain the eggs, contrary to the codes being written on a random sign, as many believe. There may have been small tasks a player might have done for Black Eye in exchange for the cheat codes, such as 
I quote, fetching him a glass of water, in which he actually gives you two extra doubloons to pay for his water, which aren't even needed to complete all purchases in Jolly Roger's Lagoon, and, and then we kind of just steal the doubloons and forget his water anyway. Rare seems to have just cut the stop and swap dialogue out. Now to defend this, I will be referencing a rare, not the actual rare, but a rare, rare interview with a former rare employer from 2004 whose whereabouts are rare. I have no idea how reliable this source is. It does seem sketchy at times, but I will leave the link in the description and let you decide. Don't mind the French comments in the forum, I translated them all, it's basically just the French trying to figure out what the hell the interview means in English. Anyway, when asked about stop and swap, the rare employee states, quote, After completing certain tasks in TUI, Black Eye, the pirate, would give you secret codes you could use in Banjo-Kazooie to gain access to the eggs. Use them on the Sandcastle floor just like cheat codes. So this could mean that Black Eye only gave you the egg codes and DK64 possibly would establish the ice key, as mentioned before, but because Stop and Swap was basically dropped around when DK64 was coming out, I don't think there was any intention after the failed 64 disk drive to put the ice key in the game anymore. The employee actually even mentions testing out and messing around with the ice key transfer from Banjo-Kazooie to the disk drive DK64 before it was dropped too. So there's that. After collecting the eggs myself recently, you, you just saw me do it before, at the pause menu I got curious at the order of the eggs. If you notice, all the eggs have a certain position. No matter what order you collect them in, the eggs go to their designated spots. And they are all in chronological order according to Banjo-Kazooie level occurrence. Except one. The first one. The cyan egg from Mad Monster Mansion, you know, the level that suspiciously had two stop and swap eggs for no good reason when they could have easily put the extra egg in an unused level. Yeah. So I did some research and found this screenshot from Grabbed by the Ghoulies. Now this is a real picture, but what's written on the board is yet to be confirmed as just a cruel joke from Rare. Quite possible them just watching us suffer, but I don't think so. I think it's a legit hint. Collect Ice Key. Collect, you know, the four eggs. Unlock secret level. Four eggs instead of six, then what of the other two eggs? Let's go back to the rare interview. The employee says how four eggs were going to transfer programming codes to Tui. He says they joked about it in Ghoulies, just what we saw. He says they put in two fake eggs in Stop and Swap to prevent people from hacking the game to get the eggs without the Sandcastle codes, which would make sense since literally everyone hacked the game back in the late 90s anyway to get all of the items, which apparently you weren't even supposed to get all of them. But here's the other convincing part. He talks about the pause menu arrangement of the eggs and says, Basically, you don't get the outside eggs, you only get the four in the middle. So BAM! Cyan egg gone, totally believable. It's the odd one out, the extra mad monster mansion egg. That meant that the yellow egg was also gone. My only issue with that egg is that if it was a fake, why would Rare bring it back as a real egg in Banjo-Tooie instead of either the red or green egg? But I'm on a roll, so I ain't questioning it. So let's recap. If this theory is correct, we've got Captain Black Eye giving away the sandcastle codes for the four eggs and one ice key. Go back into Banjo-Kazooie and type them in and collect them. Swap in your Banjo-Tooie cartridge and... Well, where do we bring the egg data? Remember that tower room text that was found in Tooie? Yeah, that's also talked about in the rare interview and apparently alluded to in the same blackboard picture from Grab by the Ghoulies. I quote, There was a picture showing if you took the eggs and the ice key to the game show platform, went through the transport pot, and then went up to the locked door, it would be open. The employee later revealed that the ice key was responsible for opening said locked door. Now, I can't make much out of the blackboard picture, and I, I never actually played Ghoulies, but I believe the larger drawing at the top is of the transformation room with the two beauty machines next to each other, indicating with an X that the right locked door in the tower would be the stop and swap door. So is that it then? Take all the items and swap them all just for the regular Tui new stop and swap solutions? The Regal Bash, Homing Eggs, Dragon Kazooie, and Jinjo and Multiplayer? Most say that there is no mystery to stop and swap, but I think there's more relevance from the interview. The Rare employee stated that inside the mystery eggs were to be mystery creatures, globos, mega globos if you will, used to access four stop and swap transformations, one of them still being Dragon Kazooie, another said to be a polar bear banjo, and the other two were coded but never implemented. Now normally globos would be used for Mumbo and Humba Wumba for magical powers and assistance in the game, but if you look in volume 134 of Nintendo Power, see there it is right there, our beta banjo Tui game seems to still be using Mumbo tokens as used in the first game. Curious that Rare would change that and substitute the Mumbo token for a newly created magical creature, the same magical creature that Rare just kind of stretched out a little bit and made bigger and called a Mega Global that was used for the permanent Dragon Kazooie transformation. Could it be that these Stop and Swap Eggs hatch Globos that were used as an alternate to Mumbo tokens in order to create the permanent transformation, just how the Dragon Kazooie worked? With this theory, it would mean Dragon Kazooie is the only remnant left of the original Stop and Swap. Alright, this has gone on long enough, so let's kind of wrap it up now. The hot swapping premise of Stop and Swap is clear on how it would have worked with both games. That's no mystery. 
Simple data storage and RAM left over from one cartridge and sent to the next cartridge that would correspond with the programming code and bring about a special feature in Banjo-Tooie. Simple. However, it is my theory based on all the evidence that the real intentions of the eggs were to be established from the Sandcastle codes given from Black Eye in his back room. The two eggs were used as fakes to prevent hacking, therefore denying access to the features if you actually did have all the eggs swapped over to Tui. Four of the real eggs had to have been used for four special transformations not needed to complete the game, and of course, the fabled ice key to access the secret level to enable the data transfer from Kazooie to Tui. That's all I've got so far. The rare interview, whether legit or not, seems to support the entire Stop and Swap theory. Stop and Swap was even made available for the Xbox Live Arcade version of Banjo Kazooie and Tui, except this time the egg data made use of gamer picks and themes, a simple cop out from the original intentions of the special feature. But I strongly believe the theory established in this video is the best answer we've got so far. We may never know its original intention, but I think it was as simple as obtaining four Globos to access four different transformations. So, uh, yeah, I'm done now. If, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave your theories in the comments below, or debunk my own theory. If you haven't already, go check out the Banjo-Kazooie Let's Play I've done. And until then, uh, see you in the next Let's Play. Take care.